So this is day one of the uh, Dallas Startup Week, powered by Chase. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this morning's kickoff is a kickoff of five days of awesome stuff. We have 160 events. We have 14 tracks of content. It's going to be pretty amazing. So thank you for making it out. Um, this is an event that is a lot more than just downtown Dallas. This is about our region. This is Fort Worth. This is Arlington, McKinney. It's all of them. And so we have a bunch of speakers up here that are going to give us a little bit of insight onto or uh, into why the region is the best for a, a company to create a company. Um, but first, I wanted to thank a couple of people. Number one, Chase. Thank you for being our title sponsor this year. Again, they came back the second time, so thank you for that. Um, Downtown Dallas Inc., Vela Wood, Touch Titans, Dev Mountain. Um, who is that? Uh, anyway, Credos uh, and many, many more. So thank you so much for that. Um, with that, I just wanted to give you a couple of seconds about um, the things that I like about downtown. Um, downtown Dallas, uh, for me, is the first thing I see in the morning. Uh, it is walkable. It's highly dense. We have lots of shopping, lots of living, lots of eating. All of those lifestyle components when you're building a company, those are really important things. Um, so that's what downtown Dallas means to me. I'm going to pass the microphone over right now to Pete Nardo. Pete leads Chase for business um, for the entire region. So um, with that, Pete. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, so Chase is proud to return as the title sponsor for Dallas Startup Week uh, for 2016. And on behalf of the 12,000 of my Chase colleagues that work in North Texas, I'm proud to represent Chase, uh, Chase for Business and be here as part of the celebration and dedication to the community of entrepreneurs. My name is Pete Nardo and I'm, I run business banking for the south part of the country for Chase. And what it really means is that my team here really work with businesses, specifically small businesses. Um, and our goal is to provide financial solutions to help them succeed and helping entrepreneurs, small businesses succeed is really what Dallas, Star Dallas Startup Week is all about. Uh, by shining the spotlight on entrepreneurs, connecting them with information, mentoring, networking, uh, we, we want to support the programs and the resources that will help them thrive. And again, that's really our mission here and why we think Startup Week is such a great venue. There's so many great seminars on tap. Uh, selfishly, I hope you join the Chase Seminar, which is this afternoon at 4 o'clock on taking, being strapped at a bootstrapping. Uh, but more importantly, even than the seminar, the, we're doing a cocktail reception immediately after that, so you really want to be there for that. <laughs> um, but really, the goal here is to help build out the infrastructure. Michael talked about the infrastructure in Dallas and the Fort Worth area is such a vibrant community. And we want to help create the connectivity that entre help entrepreneurs grow. Um, because we know that's what drives the community, is the startup community and, and the business community. We're eager to share lessons that we've learned serving 438,000 customers across the state of Texas, and then a little bit about what we've learned running our own business. So our, our bank in Dallas goes back 100 years, um, and in some ways that was a different world then, but it's really not changed all that much by then. Um, our predecessors started with $7,000 to start a bank on Main Street, which isn't all that far from right here. Um, and basically, a lot of the things they were told was that they couldn't do it. And I'm sure everybody in this room has heard that many, many times before. There's not room for another one of you, whatever that one of you is. And, and that's really how our route started right here, right here in Dallas. Um, so really, what we're here to do is really um, talking about the people in this room that have a vision and the courage to stick to it. At the end of the day, that's how we started here. That's, how all, that's what all of you are doing. So I admire everything that you're doing. And again, I think that's the key. So we hope you feel empowered by Startup Week and find the resources that you need. One of those resources is the Source Finder Guide for Dallas. So I've got it right here. Hopefully, if you don't have one, please pick one up. They'll be around the entire week here at Basecamp. Um, so before I wrap up, I just wanted to say, more importantly than anything, I want to thank all the volunteers and all the people that helped put this week, this week together. Hundreds and hundreds of hours have gone on to making this week um, something special. So we're proud to be here. We're excited about it. I hope everybody gets a lot out of it and has a great time. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. I'll take that. Um, so up next, we're going to have Trey Bowles give us a couple of seconds here about uh, 
about Dallas. Talk about Dallas real quick. So, good morning, everybody. I'm Trey Voles. Um, I am co-founder and CEO of the Dallas Entrepreneur Center, or the DEC. I happen to not believe, but know that Dallas is the best place in the world to start a company. Who's with me? There we go. <laughs> And the reason I believe this is, 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 I'll just list a couple of them. First, I think uh, we have the number one most important thing in the world to build a business, and that's customers. How many Fortune 500 companies are headquartered in North Texas? We just surpassed New York as being the top city for Fortune 500 companies in the country, right? There you go. <laughs> customers are important. But one thing we don't often think about is this idea of community or an ecosystem and how important that is. And that's why I think Dallas Startup Week is such a great set of events. Because what I believe makes a holistic, comprehensive um, entrepreneurial ecosystem is not just what we normally think of as entrepreneurs and investors, but all the different key stakeholders that make up a city. That's corporations, that's academic institutions, that's municipalities, that's incubators, accelerators, co-working spaces. All the different groups that we see coming together, pouring into an ecosystem, all trying to help our community is what separates Dallas from other cities and separates this entire region. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing entrepreneurs pop up all across this 9,600 mile, square mile region that we have. And they're in Saxe and McKinney and Frisco and Fort Worth and Arlington and Burleson, and they all have equal opportunity to be successful. And they all have equal access to this great community that's being built. And I think that's exceptionally important. And I will finish with two things that I think really does differentiate us from everybody else. And if you've heard me say this before, I apologize, but it's true. Um, one, when you're sitting, when you have an idea in, in North Texas and you're sitting across the table from somebody and, you're, and you want to tell them your idea of this, this thing that you want to start, this vision that you have, the response you get from across the table is, you should do that. You should do that. Not, here are the 25 reasons why that's not going to work. Not, here's why you're not the right person to make that happen. But yes, you should do that. It is a very can-do uh, ecosystem. But second, and more importantly, is the next question that comes across that table is, how can I help you? It's true, right? And so the great thing about Dallas is not only do they say that, but they actually follow it up. So when you think about this concept of entrepreneurship being this, to many of us, a cliff that we're sort of standing on the edge of, looking over into this abyss thing, should I actually take this step? Should I jump? into this unknown area where what we have now in Dallas, because of things like Dallas Startup Week and all the great groups that exist here to support entrepreneurs, is that as we edge up to the edge of this cliff and we look down into this abyss, there's several thousand people down there saying, go ahead, go ahead and jump, we got gotcha. you, right? We are helping entrepreneurs be successful through mentorship, through acceleration, through corporate involvement, through academic institutions, and on and on and on. And don't ever forget, that's why we have a huge advantage over anyone anywhere else in the country to help people start businesses. Hello, is this on? It is on, we got hold Okay, I'm, my name is Clarissa Lindenmeyer. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of Tech Wildcatters. We <laughs> We are an accelerator here in Dallas, and um, you, you again, you may have heard this story, but it's pretty relevant to the conversation. When our CEO wanted to start a startup, what she heard from most people at the time in Dallas was that she needed to move to the West Coast because no one would fund it, and you can't do that kind of thing in Dallas. And so uh, she, in, her, in the true fashion of Gabriella Draney, now Zilke, she said, that can't be true. I can go find help, and she did. And so a lot of people uh, helped her get Tech Wildcatters off the ground at the beginning of the time accelerators became popular. Um, and they were very committed, and the community, has, of course, has grown and grown and grown around the idea of giving entrepreneurs a reason to stay and to be and to flourish and help um, along the way, right? And, and the, the cause and the foundation of that was some of our most successful entrepreneurs that live here 
albeit very quietly, which is one of my complaints about Dallas, is that they, um, they all said, if someone had helped me, how much faster or better would I have been? And so that's really the foundation of what we do. And in fact, the mentorship of what our program is, is, is everything. So I move on to say that um, I read a quote this morning that sa said, a mentor once told me powerful people don't need to explain themselves. Probably means something different to everyone. It rang true to me. And I think that that rings true for Dallas, right? Dallas is a vibrant, powerful city with so much to offer, so much opportunity. All the things you'll hear all of us say are quite obvious. Uh, we have a startup community that is thriving, but has so much room to grow, right? We are at a very, very pivotal stage of growth and excitement, which is another great reason to be in Dallas because there's a little bit less noise. There's, I think, more room for opportunity. And so why I like events like Dallas Startup Week is that, that to me, that mirrors that quote, that we are doing and showing what who we are and what we are versus just talking about what it is we're great at. And so this is proof, right? Pulling this kind of event together a second year in a row, and as a person who does some events, it, it is a gigantic undertaking, and it, and it gets a lot of amazing people in the room, which is to my third point. I love Dallas for the sense that there's so many different kinds of people that you can meet. There are people in the startup world and in the tech community that you need to know, especially if you're a tech entrepreneur, and that's great. But I will say all the time, get outside of your bubble. Go to the art museums, meet with corporations, go to other places, maybe even go to Frisco or Fort Worth or Denton, Nancy, where are you? And so get outside of your bubble and see what our Metroplex, right? Because it's a huge Metroplex and that's really the strength in what we do. There's so much out there. Talk to people with fresh ideas that don't do what you do every single day, that challenge you and, and really together you can innovate. Well, I'm here to, uh, Trey uh, doesn't know me, but I've been inspired by uh, many of the people on the panelists, uh, on the panel, uh, and so I'm glad to be here. I met Michael uh, maybe about a year, a year and a half ago. So I work at Samsung and Richardson. I run the virtual reality business uh, for Samsung. And uh, hopefully you've seen Lil Wayne and, uh, and uh, Wesley Snipes in the commercials. Uh, I didn't have that you know, creative genius to put them there, but um, when you're working virtual reality, it's an emerging medium, and, and uh, yeah, there's big companies making headsets and hardware, but the content and the use cases for it are really coming 100% from the startup community. And so when I started working in this, pro in this product, I said, well, I need to go out and meet some companies. And 14 years in wireless, I had basically no professional reason to go meet startups. But virtual reality sort of forced my hand. And, and so I've, what did I do first? I went to Silicon Valley and I went to a virtual reality meetup there and was really welcomed and it was a great experience. And then I went to Michael's uh, Open Coffee Club. I met the Dallas VR uh, community. And uh, you know I found a really amazing welcoming community, just, just like what you say. And then what I've seen over the, as this uh, world has, has grown up and matured is that actually Dallas is extremely prominent in the virtual reality community and the virtual reality startup community. And I think it's unknown to a lot of people. Maybe it was even unknown to Michael at one point. So of course, John Carmack, the sort of genius BAFTA winner, uh, you know, guy who put Oculus on the map, he's, he's here in town. Uh, but Oculus uh, has worked with about eight companies to launch different v Gear VR applications right out of Dallas, not funding them, just supporting them, developer relations, that kind of work. Uh, Playful uh, up in McKinney was funded $25 million. They're one of the two launch titles for the Oculus Rift. Real Effects does Lionsgate's virtual reality experiences. Groove Jones, uh, also in Deep Ellum, just did an amazing piece for McDonald's. Uh, Immersive Media and Big Look 360 shot the NBA All-Star game. Uh, for Samsung uh, in 360 degrees. And those are all Dallas companies. And it's amazing to think of how big Dallas is in the VR space and all little small companies and really unknown because we're still, you know, we're still sort of getting to be 
known in this space. And so I'm really just glad to be invited to come and, and have this experience with you all. But I, I did want to say that what Trey says, I've observed it to be true. I've been inspired by, by what these guys have been doing to build up the community and uh, really glad to be here. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Really, how are you doing? <laughs> okay. Good to see you all. My name is Eric Griffin. I'm the Director of Research and Innovation at the Dallas Regional Chamber. And my understanding is if you have an idea and someone hasn't told you that it's crazy, that it may not be an idea worth fighting for. So Michael, I'm here to tell you putting me in cleanup is a crazy idea. <laughs> so let's test that theory out. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to recruit corporate headquarters here at the Dallas Regional Chamber. And when I say Dallas Regional Chamber, we're truly regional. We're ambivalent about where the development occurs or where a business ends up landing as long as it's in this MSA. And it's because we know that we culturally are a unit in this area. Um, I, I just look in the audience around you, you're gonna see people that have successful robotics companies, you're gonna see successful entrepreneurs uh, that have started accelerators and given back, you're gonna see people that, well, I guess like a niche that, what, what do you again? <laughs> oil and gas, we got oil and gas, we got gamers, we got all kinds of people here. So. One thing about this area that I can firmly say is that we are a diverse area. So is anybody aware that there's this energy crisis thing going on where oil has been floating around 30 to $35 a barrel? Did you realize that here in Dallas? Did you know that Texas is an energy economy, but still Dallas is doing well? It's because we're at a unique time in history and a unique place. Our economy is so diverse. There's an opportunity to really stake your claim here and make your mark here and do well. So when we're selling Dallas to other areas, it really is not that difficult of a product to sell because there's so many good things going on. Trey mentioned that we have a ton of Fortune 5 and 1,000 companies here. We have 41 Fortune 1,000 companies in the area. That's a testament to having that customer base. But the really unique thing about this area is that unlike other big metropolitan areas, we're not really just a one central city. We weren't located on a port. We didn't have some sort of way to, to get products in and out of this area. We created ourselves out of just about nothing. And we've continued to grow with that ethic. So we're basically founded by entrepreneurs and, and wildcatters and rebels and people that just want to make their claim. And that's a culture that we all share. In this area, not only Dallas and Fort Worth make up the population, but we have an additional 12 cities, over 100,000 people in population. So if you don't find that specific culture that you're looking for in downtown Dallas or downtown Fort Worth or even in a university town like Denton, you're going to find a place that looks and feels like you. And that's why it's easy to sell this place. So I encourage you just to meet as many people as you can. Explain your story. Let them know what you're doing. Don't be shy about it. Normally, I'm the guy behind the computer. I'm, I'm the shy one, but I'm going to try to get out there and talk with some of you today, too. But please, enjoy yourself. Know that this is a culture, cultural phenomenon, and you're in the best place in this country right now, whether it's the central location. I mean centrally, globally located, not just north, south, east, and west for the United States, but really, because of our DFW airport, we can get to any place, anywhere, anytime, and share what we have. The last thing I'd like to do is just put in a pitch for DallasInnovates.com. That's uh, a joint thing that we have with uh, D, D Magazine partners. Uh, you'll see them here. But we all share the same desire to talk about innovation in this area and how creative our population really is. And we're really proud of that. And uh, uh, it was mentioned that you know we don't really talk about our successes that much. Maybe it's the modesty that we have in this area, but there is no reason why we can't say, pat ourselves on the back and pat each other on the back and say, be proud of what's in this area. That's the reason we don't know that there's this VR community across the board, because we don't tout ourselves as much as we could and should. So do that. When you, when you leave here after Saturday, say great things about the area, and please visit DallasInnovates.com. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. So Pete, you mentioned it earlier. Um, a week like this doesn't happen without a lot of people putting it together. Um, we had a great team. We had 11 organizers on the organizing committee, 14 track captains. So every one of the tracks that you see had somebody in charge of it. They were responsible for 10 events per track. Um, that gives us over 150, but we have 160 tracks um, on the schedule. Uh, I'm sorry, 150, uh, 160 sessions. I'll get it out of my mouth here in a minute. Um, but anyway, there are 70 volunteers right? 70 people have given up their time this week to help you find your way around the place. So be sure to acknowledge them. And then Sarah was the, uh, the ringleader this year. So, <laughs> and she ducks out. Um, 
She hates it when I do that. She really does. Anyway, I just wanted to give an acknowledgement to the team and also to the panel. Thank you so much for coming together last minute. You all did a wonderful job. Thank you, Chase, again uh, for coming back this year and helping us out. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Mm.